Here we go. Getting another live stream started. You know we're live. And we're <laughs> live. Boom. Uh, we're going to wait for a couple people to jump in the room here. And then, uh, boom, there's Charles. Charles, finally, uh. you're back to first again. <laughs> Hit a thumbs up oh. so you guys can hear us all right. If the audio is nice and clear, we got the nice bright lights over here. So we're lit up like candles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tuesday, I'm confused. Yeah, Duncan, um, we had to switch it up <laughs> because this guy is going to go vacation for like 10 days and uh, we're not going to be available on Thursday and then the following Thursday. So we thought we'd get a quick one in for you guys today. Yeah, exactly. Andrew, what's going on, man? Uh, for all the, if, if there's anyone in the room that won the wedges, I just shipped them out. So all the winners from the wedge giveaway and the Instagram contest, all that stuff got sent out. So congrats to, thank you guys all for engaging in those videos, leaving so many comments. Um, uh, this, the engagement was through the roof, wasn't it? On yeah, I mean, you guys, I think we had over 400 comments, you know, almost every video. Yeah. So um, that was, I think, a record for us. So yeah, keep it coming. Um, we've actually got one extra wedge to give away. Oh, yeah. So um, let us know in the comments if you guys would like to do a giveaway for um, the Paris and Claire bid, uh, either part yeah. two or part three, maybe. That's a great idea. So we got one more wedge to give away. Yeah, and we're gonna actually play a little golf today. I'm leaving tomorrow for the trip, as you guys know, but um, we just called out at Santa Luz and they got some open time. So, and Paris is gonna join us today. So. Mm. She was available and we're gonna go play a little golf after this. So yeah, we said why not invite her? We're gonna so. do one more video and we got a guy named Matt who's gonna be helping us out with uh, video editing. He's here in San Diego and we've been talking to him for a little while. So we're gonna see how um, him doing the editing uh, goes. So if Matt, if you're in the room, big thank you for reaching out. And thank you to all the people that reached out and offered their help and support with that. Haven't gotten back to everyone, but uh, definitely appreciate it. Cooler rocks in the house, aloha. What's up? <laughs> Um, what do we think about the LPGA dress code? Um, I, I, I understand both sides, I think. Um, obviously, they're trying to preserve the game, I think, in, in you know, the way it's been and, and keeping it classy and, and not getting too caught up in the, you know, people promoting their body more so the, ga the game. Like, I think some of the players on tour, once they start cut wearing some of this stuff that's a little bit, uh, you know, it's a little bit low cut, those players get way more attention, even if they're not playing good, they get a lot of attention for the wrong things. And I think the LPGA doesn't want to promote people getting a lot of attention for their looks. And instead they want people getting attention for how well they're playing. And I can understand the whole style and fashion thing. And, you know, Ricky can wear orange pants and all that stuff, but I think there's a balance there. I don't really know what it is. I think they're getting a little bit too strict with it personally, but um, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I, I don't really have a strong stance on it. I just think, uh, you know, they should be able to do what they want to do. Uh, we shouldn't have any regulations on anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's my theory. Mike's anti-regulation. Yeah. And I'm right there with him. <laughs> <laughs> um, AJ said he just finished his uh, first golf vlog going through post right now. Very excited. Nice. AJ, give us a heads up uh, when you... Uh, when you launch it, love yeah. to check it out. Check out AJ's channel, guys. Mm -hmm. We love giving people shout outs that are that are going out there and doing the video stuff, trying to create their own videos. Definitely supporting, you know, all, all these guys. So check them out, give them a chance, you know, give them some feedback and let's all keep like growing this community of golf on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tamara said, any tips on figuring out your uh, distances? Yeah, just go out there and put in the time. You know, you just gotta go to the range, uh, shoot a bunch of different targets, hit your irons. Uh, figure it out, write it down, and then you know obviously remember it. And if you're in between clubs, either choke up on on the club and and go up one, or you know hit hit a little harder on on that club. So, um, and if you don't know this, most of you guys probably already know. But um, if you if you hit a draw, you tend to hit it a little bit further, and if you fade the ball, you tend to hit it a little bit shorter. So if you have that two-way miss like I do right now, and you're drawing it and fading it, just understand that you know uh, the draw is going to go a little bit further. Jonathan said, "Good, uh, good job on the vids, creeping up as the top as my favorite YouTubers. <laughs> nice, mm. thanks, Jonathan. Yeah. All right. Are we gonna make more golf holics uh, gear? I think we will eventually. Um, we just don't really know what what to make next. The shirts were pretty easy because there's a company that can fulfill that stuff, and the ball markers we can keep stock without getting you know too in debt on it, and it doesn't take up a lot of room. So." 
let us know in the comments what you guys want to see next. I, we've been hearing um, head covers, right? That's been head popular. covers been pretty popular, so we'll see if we get a few more, you know, people excited about that. And if we do, then we'll make them because it, it'd be cool for us to have them too. So yeah, and polo shirts, obviously, I think that's that's it's something we should have, but it's another another one of those things where uh, we kind of have to keep stock of it. So yeah, need to find a company that can that can fulfill it for us. Gavin said, uh, thoughts on Justin Thomas wearing a tie at the Open? I thought it was super cool. You know, I like different styles. I like Ricky's style. I like uh, changing it up a little bit. He went a little old school. And, yeah. uh, I, you know, bringing back tradition is always a good thing in, in my mind. Yeah. How do you guys deal with a, a poor hole that's a card wrecker? <laughs> oh, I, I don't. I, <laughs> well, I don't deal with it very well, very well. But um, you just try to stay positive and try to forget about it. I mean, it's in the past, so there's no point in dwelling on it. And I so, sometimes I'll try to bounce back and make a birdie on the next hole, or at least a par. You know, just to like steady the ship a little bit. But it's tough, especially if you make like a triple or, or worse. Um, it's hard to bounce back. But just understand that you can always you can always get back in the round. So especially if you have a bad hole early on in the round, just understand that. Hey, maybe you had a bad front nine, but you could still do it on the great and you know just focus up and keep grinding. This this game's a grind. You guys see us. We talk about it all the time, but I think uh, and you're you're the best at this, man. You just <laughs> stay in the game and you just keep fighting. So yeah, you know you're you're just gonna have to go out there and expect to hit a few bad shots. And when you do, you know how you bounce back is super important. You know I think I told you guys this before. I, I try not to think too much out there and. Um, you know, I just, uh, you know, forget about that shot right away and move on to the next one and kind of focus on it. And, you know, usually it works out for me, but uh, I don't dwell on the past too much. So as soon as I hit a bad one, I might get a little frustrated, but I'll get over it pretty quick. Congrats on 12K subs. Yeah, we're almost at 13K. Yeah, creeping cool. up there. <laughs> What's the best range finder? Um, we both use Bushnell range finders. I have the one with slope, Mike doesn't, but he, you've had that thing for what, like four or five years? I want to say like six years, six, yeah. maybe. Um, it's been great, you know. Yeah. It's a little bit pricey, but to be honest, I've had it this long. It's very durable. Um, it doesn't have the slope like Marco's. His is the newer edition, but um, it's still a great, great range finder. Why are we not streaming in 16 by 9 format? I don't know. I haven't been able to change the settings in uh, the program we're using. That's why the you see the black bars on the sides. Still need to figure that out. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, AJ is saying, work on you used to own PXG clubs. Not sure if you've already covered this, but what were your thoughts on the clubs um, and PXG as a company? So, I got super jacked up about the PXG irons. I thought they were going to be, you know, the greatest clubs ever and they they felt great don't get me wrong they were solid clubs but i think the issue that i had was with the fitting so when i went through the fitting over at the grand del mar um the guy didn't use a lot live board we didn't use like a track man it was more just like based on feel and um they were a little bit limited in terms of just all the it wasn't as comprehensive as like the kingdom or some of the other fittings i've done so i got fitted and i think they were they were incorrectly bent. Some of the irons were bent two degrees uh, flat. Other ones were like one degree. So when I went out and played with them, I had some crazy misses going on. And I was like, gosh, my swing must be really bad. And I kept thinking it was my swing. But then we went and checked the clubs on the live board uh, after that fitting. And I was like, oh my gosh, these are like considerably off somewhere neutral. So, yeah, so it was, it was a really bad fitting experience. The clubs felt fine, but for the price, I would, I would never buy those golf clubs. Um, doesn't matter how much money you have. I think they're just a status symbol, personally. Um, you know, just like you have Bentleys and Ferraris, yeah, you get better performance, but are they worth, you know, you know, five, seven X of what another car is costs? You know, it's debatable. So I think these golf clubs are like that. They're not gonna really give you that, any kind of like additional performance. At least not from what I saw. I had the three wood and the hybrid. I tried out the driver. The driver was terrible. I lost like 20 yards distance with the driver. Um, and you got to keep in mind though, this was um, about a year and a half, two years ago. So they were, well, about a year and a half ago. So they were the older model. Hula said, uh, any tips for Wolf Creek? He's going to go out there and play in Vegas. <laughs> you got to keep it in play out there. <laughs> you know, the wind's going to be howling and um, I recommend hitting some irons off the tee. Uh, 
Vista Valley was quite rough for you, Marco. Yeah, I was. Uh, I struggled out there, and uh, I, I just, uh, you know, you have your bad days. So, what can you do? Uh, Charles said, "Hey, Mama Rifus." <laughs> <laughs> Show Mama Rifus some yeah, love. What's up, moms? What's going on? She's in the house tonight. Where are we playing today? Uh, we're gonna play Santa Luz. Yeah. And we're gonna go tear it up again. Yeah. I feel like uh, our games are coming along right now, and uh, we're gonna play good. Yeah, I'm excited to get out there. Yeah. Paris is joining us too, so it's gonna be fun. Uh, what's up from Jersey? Love the vids. Thanks, Patrick. Uh, when you guys come to Chicago, I'll get you guys on a course called Black Sheep, Great Links course uh, in Sugar Grove. I think I have played that course. It is awesome. Um, I think it's a little bit out there and kind of like farm country, if I remember correctly. And uh, it was a really cool course. Um, so yeah, uh, shoot us a message. Tyler says, uh, what software do we use for editing and adding all the scores and yardage and everything? So Tyler, we edit on Final Cut Pro X and then all the graphics that you see on screen, I actually designed those in Photoshop and then I basically made uh, essentially a template that I just dropped into Final Cut and then I'll you know, change out the numbers and the holes and all that stuff inside of Final Cut. So yeah, Photoshop Final Cut. Uh, will we vlog in Arizona in the future? Well, yeah, when we go out there to do a video, play some golf out there, we'll definitely do some vlogging. And um, if we do any kind of extended trip, we'll probably bring the camera and all the, well, of course we're gonna have the camera, but we're gonna bring the streaming setup so we can do a stream just like we did up at Pebble. I think that was a lot of fun to, yeah, yeah just talk about the course while <laughs> it's like still fresh in your mind. Um, how much do you notice uh, from the TP5 balls and the Pro V1? Um, for me, I think the TP fives, you know, very similar in performance. It just lasts a little bit longer, is what yeah. I, I, you know. I think the outer cover is, is better than the uh, the Pro V one X. You know, if you can afford to buy the Pro V one X and go through that many golf balls and, and go for it, but I think the TP five is uh, the best bang for your buck. Yeah. Hey, just bought stickers yesterday. Any any idea when they'll come? Uh, stickers we usually can ship from California, depending on where you're at. Um, it takes probably three days, I want to say, through USPS. So if you're in Canada or somewhere else, then it might take about a week or so, but not too long. Uh, Tanner said, do you guys do YouTube full time or do you guys have full time jobs? Just started watching you guys this week. So welcome to the channel, Tanner. We do uh, YouTube part time. We both own businesses. Mike owns a limo company and I own an online media company. And uh, yeah, we just make these videos. Usually we try to make one a week and we'll do a live stream a week and um, that's pretty much it for right now. It's not a full-time gig by any means. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, AJ just switched to the TP5X. He noticed the same um, and then asked if we noticed any loss of spin or short game shots. Tour Salsa trademark. Did you guys see that in the first video? I did. I, I threw that uh, little thing in there. the best. <laughs> I was trying to have a little bit of fun with it. God, I also tried to add the trademark symbol in after Golfholics in our like YouTube name, our channel name, but they don't actually let you put that stuff in there anymore. They used to, so some people got grandfathered in with the trademark. Yeah. But, uh, Tamar uh, said, follow up for the distance question. Uh, what if uh, range has limited flight balls? You got to sweat. You got to get out of that range. Um, there's no way you can, you know, check your distances on that type of range. You got to go somewhere else, or you got to go on the course. Um, but yeah, you just have to put in the time and effort and, you know, get it down. What app do we use for shot tracing? Um, when we were adding the shot tracers, we were using the God of Golf app. And I think it's like a $5 upgrade to be able to like export the videos and do some of the other fancy stuff. So, yeah. Uh, Nick said, did, did you try the Snell ball before the giveaway? Yeah. So the Snell balls, I used to actually play them quite a bit. Um, I, and the ones, whoever won them for the giveaway they're gonna have my company logo on them so i apologize for that but they're really good balls um for the price that you pay for them i think they're like 25 bucks a dozen or somewhere around there they're they're comparable like i would say to a pro v1 and the tp5 um durable they probably don't spin quite as much but very good balls um greetings from holland what's up holland in the house <laughs> Uh, what happened to Marco's custom Scotty? Uh, it got eBayed. I was, uh, <laughs> yeah, it went on eBay. I actually made almost all my money back on that putter, which I was pleasantly surprised on. But um, yeah, I just wanted to change, and I thought it was ridiculous that I was playing with such an expensive putter, and just wanted to go to something that was uh, a little bit traditional. And 
something I can tinker around with and not feel bad about tinkering around with. So I put a new grip on the putter that I have and I didn't have any reservations about ripping off the old Scotty grip. Obviously on the other one, yeah, doing that would, would have been, you know, it would have devalued the club probably. So, and I'm loving, I'm loving the putter that I got right now. <laughs> any youth uh, size hats? Uh, good question. We have small, medium and like the adult sizes. Um, it, it'll fit. It I think. You think so? I think so. If, if it doesn't fit, we'll, we'll take it back. So if you guys want to order the hats, if you have any issues with any of the products, we'll take it back. No problem. Uh, we want to make sure you guys are getting good stuff. So who would win in a cage match? <laughs> well, this guy used to wrestle. So if he got me down on the ground, I can be bad. <laughs> I got, I got boy. length on him though with my arms. Yeah, yeah he's so. got length. He's, he's a, he's a big boy. I wouldn't mess with him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mike, ever thought of franchising in other cities? No, I, it's just too much. You know, uh, starting a business here is tough enough as it is, and uh, you know, going out to other cities. I, I can move up to Orange County. I'm, I'm kind of marketing a lot more up in Temecula, also. So um, I'm kind of local, Southern Cal. He's killing it up in Temecula. That's like his specialty. <laughs> yeah, I love wine the, tours. Wine tours. Yeah. If you guys are in uh, San Diego or Southern Cal and want to go wine tasting, hit me up. Yep. Uh, any. Uh, ever played any courses in Scotland? No, yeah. ha haven't even been to Scotland to be honest with you. So that's that's a trip that's high on the list. We absolutely need to get out there and make that happen, but hopefully soon. Tyler said, if you guys come out to Phoenix, I'd love to help film. You guys can focus on the round. Also, you should play, do a collaboration with Paige Spranick. Um, I'll let him take that. So a little update on the Paige uh, Spranick. Uh, we reached out to her just recently. You guys were mentioning it in the comments, so we were like, all right, let's give it another shot. And we actually heard back from her management company. So we got a call set up with them in a couple weeks and are gonna basically just pitch the idea of doing a course vlog, see what, how, you know, what, what they, how much she charges and how that all works, and then we're gonna go from there. But yeah, we got the ball rolling on that one. Uh, ben said, uh about the uh, Callaway irons compared to the other brand irons. Uh, I love them. I think they're really pure. They feel great. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of them. I, I like his irons also. I think we've got the two best set of irons on the market right now. So, um, but I could go TaylorMade or Callaway. What's the biggest bet we've made? Ooh, I'll let. <laughs> love when you guys bet. Uh, okay, so there was a day at Santa Luz, probably, I don't know, it's probably a couple of years ago now that, um, yeah, we started we started making some big bets and it got progressively worse because we started with like one dollar chips and then it got to like five dollar chips and then I got down to like a hundred bucks and then I was like all right let's do like ten dollar per shots and uh, I got down a couple hundred bucks on on the driving range uh, really quickly and we had to shut it down but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah it was uh it was ugly. <laughs> uh... Any chance we'll play in England with uh, Pete and Rick? Yeah, I think there's a good chance that we're gonna be, I think any time that we get out there, whenever we get out there, we'll probably end up syncing up with those guys because you know, for obvious reasons. Um, so it's just a matter of us getting over there and and linking up with them. They've been really gracious with us. They've been, they've been communicating with us, answering emails and things like that. So we have a good line of communication with both of them and um, I don't think there's any reason we wouldn't. Yeah, Pete's a super cool dude, and Rick seems super cool too. So um, those guys are awesome. I, I, we kind of wanted to do a little Ryder Cup action. Um, either we split the teams, or maybe me and Marco versus everybody. You know, we'll, we'll take on those <laughs> European guys. We'll see how they do. You know. <laughs> uh, Charles asks, "Will you guys ever play the Top Secret Golf Course from one of your first bids? We'd love to see what you score." out there. Oh, that, that's a good idea, Charles. I never thought about going back to like a course that we've only played once and, you know, a year later seeing, seeing how we do. I feel like we could shoot par. You yeah. Know? The course was, the conditions were really tough that day. Yeah. I don't know if were. you guys remember, but it was really cold and really windy and it was our first time seeing it. And, um, I think I was like one over going into like 16 and then I went like double and then <laughs> bogey or something. So, um, yeah, I think oh, we could play well out there. Uh, you need some logo ball mark repair tools. Okay. Yeah, we could do some uh, ball mark repair tools. That's that's an easy one. Mm. Least club, uh, the club that gets used the least in our golf bag. 
That's a good question. Probably my rescue. Probably my three wood. What's this? This is know. the first time we're seeing this. Yeah. Odd stock trader just uh, looks like you made a five dollar donation to the channel. Thank you so much. <laughs> is Dude. that what that is? Yeah. I think we turned on like super chat so they they can like make donations. Huh. Wow, that's cool. You're our first. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> wow. Uh, Nicholas said Golfholics trademark. Yeah, it's trademarked. Yeah, boom. boom. Thank Filed. you. <laughs> Patent pending. <laughs> trademark pending. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We we kind of got scared with the tour sauce. You know, we couldn't believe that that was trademarked, and um, so you know, we just figured we need to do ours before someone you know snatched it up. Yeah. Uh, any chance of doing a full scale vlog of Tori again? Yes. We tried to make a tea time out there just recently on the north course and it was it was just slammed so we got to just <laughs> keep trying to make tea times out there but eventually we're going to get out there and do it and we're going to you know you know we're going to get the drones out, drone shots out there again and give it the full treatment so excited yeah. to bring that one and I ended up going to Faraday Live uh, a few months ago and I met the superintendent and uh, he was interested in uh, you know uh, leaving some uh, commentary on the video. Oh, cool. So I got his number and uh, next time we go out there Maybe we can uh, reach out to him and hopefully he can you know uh, Give us some feedback on uh, the course and what he's doing and all the different new things that he did with the north course What are your favorite wedges? Mm. For me, it's got to be Cleveland, you know, I've been a Cleveland fan for a really long time. So um, I love all their wedges so I got I, I want to ask you something. We were just at Santa Luz the other day and we hit some new Cleveland wedges. Mm -hmm. And did you hit the Strixon irons? Yes. Is that what it was? Do you I remember did. what model they were that you hit? It was like the forged version of mine, basically. Um, so, what'd you think of them? I thought they were really good. The Strixon uh, makes a really good product. I thought they uh, did really well with the, the club manufacturing part of it. And uh, I hear the ball's awesome too, but the irons felt solid. Um, I hit them really straight, which was kind of, <laughs> kind of peculiar. I, I wasn't sure if the lie angle was correct on the on that iron, but um, you know, to be honest, I, I liked them. I thought they were good. And the wedges, we both hit uh, some of the wedges. I don't remember the exact model, but I think they're just like the latest, um, you know, wedges from Cleveland, and they were awesome. I mean, we were nipping those things, and mm -hmm. they felt yeah. they felt solid. We, we played for a few bucks. We were gonna vlog it, but we're like, all right, let, that's too yeah. much. Yeah, there's a bunch of members <laughs> out there and stuff, so. <laughs> Uh, what's your dream place to play? Uh, for me, I love uh, Maui, uh, Kapalua. Um, that's probably my, my favorite place in the world to go. Uh, could we see a repeat on Olympic Club? Yes. I, I would like some redemption out there. You know, I, I was uh, not 100% physically and uh, I played terrible, so, you know, I would like to definitely get some redemption. Cooper says you guys should make t-shirts. Uh, Cooper, check out our store, shop.golfholics.com. We got some shirts on there along with other stuff. Uh, PGA Championship predictions. I, I, I got to go with David Toms again, you know? <laughs> I, know he's old. You I don't know if he, he's even qualified to play in it, but I think as a past champ, he's going to come back at 51 and he's going to beat everybody down. Uh, I'm going to go with what everyone is going to go with, which Jordan is Jordan Speed. Speed. I mean, let's see that guy go back to back. <laughs> Majors. Oh. <laughs> So. <laughs> have we ever played in South Africa? Nope, would love to, but haven't gotten there. Is my body used to P90X yet? It is, it is. it's getting there. There's definitely still some of the exercises that I get really sore on, especially like the, um, a lot of the like plyometrics where you do a lot of lunges. So like my hamstrings and <laughs> my, <laughs> my gluteus maximus will get nice and sore. But um, other than that, it's, it's adjusted pretty well. And I've been eating really clean lately, so. Definitely uh, lost, some, lost some pounds, which is good. Uh, Tanner asked, would you guys uh, give Pebble Beach another chance? I feel like you guys deserve to play for free since you guys got shorthanded the first time around. Yeah, Pebble, for I sure. mean, we got to go out there and play it again for sure. Um, I, I definitely don't think that they will uh, comp a, us around, mm -hmm. you know, so um, we'll have to pay another <clears throat> 500 bucks to get out there and play. But, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll, you know, maybe when we're, uh, you know, Five six years down the road, we do they have do twilight go. rounds? I don't think. I mean, with the twilight's probably like four fifty, so it's like, why would you even bother? <laughs> oh, so, um, but we are going to make sure that the greens are good and they're not punched and sanded the day of. Uh, 
Kyle asked, uh, what is the best string of holes you have ever put together? Uh, I think it was like four, four birdies in a row for me. I think for me it's been three birdies in a row, I want to say. I don't remember where, but I do remember making three in a row at one, one time in my life. <laughs> um, if you guys have any ideas for potential collabs for us, um, put them down in the comments and let us know. Because we're, obviously the, you know, the, the usual suspects are out there with like Rick and Peter and those guys. But if you guys know any other channels that are up and coming or anybody that just, you know, maybe is into golf but is doing YouTube and is in Southern California or really anywhere in, in the U.S., let us know in the comments because we're looking for more people to collab with and, and get out there with and keep growing the channel. Mark said, hi guys, love the channel. Uh, just finished watching uh, you guys in part one of the girls kicking your butts. <laughs> yeah, they, they were playing great. Uh, Paris started off birdie birdie on us, so. Yeah. Uh, and then Claire chipped in on us on the first hole. And, and then you uh, made that putt. And then like, I made that putt, but. And then I um, three jacked it. <laughs> <laughs> He thought it was so fast downhill, he just barely tapped it. But you know, there was a little morning dew, and uh, I think I was just in shock with what was going on. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> it was like two birdies were just made. Yeah, so it was awesome. Um, but yeah, girls did great that day. Yeah, you guys are gonna love the rest of the series and the videos. I'm I'm trying to put more of the stuff that would be in the outtakes in the videos, which you probably noticed. That's why they're a little bit longer. Um, you guys have asked for that, so I, and I think it's a nice addition to just kind of like show you know, the fun side of it as well, instead of just, we're gonna hit a knockdown eight. So, it's gonna be good. Collab with Nate Shot. Been yeah. hitting him up for the last couple months. Charles has been all over him. I think Charles is like good friends with his dad now, so. <laughs> <laughs> great work on that, Charles. Sure, Charles Sorry. is friends with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great. Yeah, um, still hasn't gone back to us though. Yeah, that's okay. Um, uh, fried eggs. Yeah, fried eggs seems cool. Uh, I think we totally do one with them. Mark Crossfield, I don't think does collab, so don't think we'll be doing one with him. Yeah, he was just here in San Diego too. Uh, played Spyglass two weeks ago and shot an 82. Watched yellow vids beforehand, definitely helped me out. Nice. Solid, yeah. Good. <laughs> That's cool. some Spyglass. Yeah, Spyglass was phenomenal. <laughs> Um, what do you guys think about the Charlie Hoffman drop in the bunker? I thought it was ridiculous. I mean, he was in a hazard. True that, but I think there is a new rule uh, with the cement that they put around um, the outer edges of the uh, bunker. So it is man-made, um, so I think they did put it in the rules. It was a little bit quirky, but he used the rules to his advantage, and I think knowing the rules is... Um, one of the most important things, you know, taking drops on the opposite side of the uh, cart path. If you attempt to play it lefty is another one that, you know, people kind of, you know, don't like. But for the most part, um, it's a rule and, you know, it's part of, part of the game. So if you are knowledgeable with it, it can help you out. I feel like the stream just dropped off for a second. Do more collabs with juniors? Yeah. Um, we're going to do a ton with, with kids, you know, that's part of our thing. And, uh, yeah. You know, me coaching at the high school level helps us, you know, uh, participate with them. And, uh, you know, Paris now, she's a college grad. And, um, you know, Claire, she's going to be a freshman in college. Uh, I think we'll, we'll have Marco out. We got golf season starting uh, next week. Uh, August 7th is tryouts for us. So maybe sometime in September we'll have this guy out. We'll do, uh, we'll do a, a partnership with uh, one of the girls. And... Uh, and he can have the other one, and uh, we'll uh, we'll play for like two minutes of plank or something. <laughs> you know, maybe not push-ups, but um, you know, definitely something fun. When are we going to Florida? Uh, Florida, December third. Uh, we are going to fly out there. Um, I actually need to chat with Thomas and you know confirm everything, but um, I think that's the date that we have lined up, and um, so that'll be the first time we play with uh, somebody from the channel. Can you, at what point do you switch from uh, maybe game improvement irons down to some of the more player focused irons like that, that we're playing? You know, uh, he says he's down to a 9.5. I think you're right there. Um, you know, for the uh, most part, I think if you're single digit, uh, you can drop to the forged. Yeah. You know, um, I've always played forged. You know, I played blades for a little bit, but you know, you got to be just a pure ball striker to play blades, and um, I don't think a lot of guys are. So uh, that forgiveness definitely helps with the forged uh, irons. 
And I think with the forged irons, you, you're able to work the ball a lot better with those. So if that's something that you are aspiring to do or you want to do, you can always just grab some and, and play around with them. But if you hit the ball pretty straight, which most, most of us don't, but um, some of the game improvement irons really do make life a lot easier with, you know, you do sacrifice being able to bend it and turn it and some of that. But um, there, there's definitely no shame in continuing to play those, those irons and keeping them in the bag because, uh, you know, they do make the game a little bit easier. New York in the house. What, what? <laughs> Any trips to New York? <laughs> uh, no, but we, we need to get out there. I mean, there's so many places that we need to get out to. So um, I think it's just a matter of timing for us. And do you know where are we going for uh, Justin's 40th? I think we're going to do Atlanta. So we are going to do um, East Lake, Atlanta Athletic Club, uh, Peach Tree. And I'm not quite sure what the fourth is going to be, but uh, we'll do one of them. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun trip. Rock, paper, scissors for five bucks. <laughs> All right, let's double down. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> oh, why don't you guys go ahead and make a donation of ten dollars, please? Actually, so. fifteen. Do we just double it up? <laughs> oh, oh my gosh! Starting the day off right. It's gonna be a good day. Oh. Oh, I suck at life. Oh. <laughs> uh, Nick, Nick, why don't you go ahead and make that donation since it was your idea? Yeah, Nick, come on. <laughs> I'll take it. Son of a gun. Uh, hey, guys, I've been a 10-finger grip golfer my whole life. I know Smike interlocks and Marco overlaps. Would you recommend switching to one of the three styles? Um, yeah, baseball grip just doesn't work for golf. You yeah. know, I grew up playing baseball, so I can attest to that. Um, I like the interlock. He likes to overlap. So whatever you feel comfortable with, I think is you know up to you. But you got to do one or the other. You can't do baseball grip. Yeah, and make that switch as soon as possible because it takes a while. It feels weird, but just do it and stick to it, and you'll be thankful in you know in a year. Uh, Tim said LPGA is clueless on how they run things. Can't wait to start our own tour. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> him and I, he's a coach for uh, Rancho Bernardo, and um, we've been talking about starting a tour, maybe like a zero to. You know, ten handicap, and uh, or maybe a plus three to, um, you know, a ten handicap, and everyone can play, and we, you know, start a little mini tour off of it. You know, what do you guys think about that? And uh, if you guys have any comments, you know, feel free to leave it in the uh, comment section. <laughs> any tips for hitting a three wood off the deck? Yeah, stay down on it. It's easy to, it's really easy to come off up on those shots because it's teed up further in your stance usually. So I think just just staying down on it and swinging smooth is is key. Yeah, you know I agree with that, and uh, I, I like to choke up a half inch, maybe even an inch. Good uh, swing eighty percent with your three wood because it's a little tougher to hit, but um, that's pretty much it. I didn't see the end of the uh, U.S. Girls Junior Semifinals, did you? I, you know, I didn't either, but I saw like just a picture of some girl taking a legal tap, and I think she missed the putt. Oh, it yeah, wasn't given like to her, yeah. Cross, yeah. So one, um, if it wasn't given to her, then she should do the right thing and lose the hole. Yeah. Um, but I don't think she did, and I don't think the other girl called her on it. I'm not 100% sure on what happened there, so... Um, but for the most part, I, I thought um, she should have been penalized or uh, taken uh, the loss on the hole. Uh, where are we playing in Florida? What's the plan right we now? We are playing know? TPC Sawgrass uh, for sure. And then um, we're going to play with a couple other PGA pros. So um, depending on where they're at, it depends on where we're going to go. So wherever they're available, we're going to kind of bounce around too. Are we gonna start uh, swing analysis for subs? I don't think so. I think no. there's other guys already doing that, and they do a fantastic job. So, um, you know, me and my golf guys, they got the whole instructional aspect of the game nailed down. Finch and Rick have all the equipment and instructions, and course logs. They got it all. So, I think there's plenty of other good places where you guys can get the swing analysis. You just come to our channel to chill back, <laughs> watch some nice courses, yeah. and enjoy it. So. Um, it says, uh, when are the rounds under par coming? Uh, the video Ooh. that is, uh, you know, part one right now, check out. Uh, God, it's it's hard for me not to release the other parts right now because they're all uploaded and ready to go with the girls. And this guy played fantastic out there. Yeah. So you guys are in for a treat. The last three rounds that I've played have been under par. So um, that's the most consistent that I've been all year. I feel like my game's coming around a little bit. So, um, 
you know, two of those rounds haven't been on, on camera, but um, I, I, feel, I feel pretty good right now with my game. You guys golfing today? We sure are. We're playing out at Santa Luz. We got a 12 o'clock tee time, so a couple hours. Uh, I play baseball grip and I'm a 4.5. Yeah, Ginger, that's, that's good. You'd probably be a 2.5 if you had a regular golf grip. Any cheap munis that we can recommend in San Diego? Um, I, I really like Oaks North. It's, it's an executive course. They have some par fours out there. I think it's what, like 30 bucks to play out there or something like that? Yeah. It's super easy to walk to. Um, what other municipal courses have we got in SD? Uh, Balboa. Balboa is a great one, yeah. Um, and we should go play Goat Hill. Um, one of my friends runs that place and uh, it's, a, it's a nice par three and we should definitely go, uh, go do that. That'll be fun. Uh, you guys, Fried Eggs versus uh, Rick, Pete, and Andy Carter for the YouTube Ryder Cup. Yes, we'll take on everybody. <laughs> so, you know, if you guys want to see it, we'll take Rick and Pete on. We'll do a Ryder Cup challenge, uh, or we can swap teams, whatever. But we'll, we'll take on any two, and um, yeah. It just said, all right, Mike, got to ask. Do you buy a new Under Armour polo for each new vlog, or do you just have a massive collection? I know those are 2017 style. Yeah, they are fresh. I got a lot of freshies. I bought like, I don't know, maybe seven or eight you know, new shirts, and so um, it just looks like I got a new one on because we have three parts. I don't know. So, um... Why don't you mention in uh, Crossfield when you talk about the other guys? He's the king of course vlogs, smart instruction. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I think we haven't really, we've tried to communicate with him. We thought that uh, kind of the golfing YouTube community was pretty tight knit and we were able to communicate with me and my golf, uh, Rick, Peter, Fried Eggs, all these guys very easily and they've been very open to doing course vlogs and helping each other out. Um, Mark's the only one that's been a little bit uh, reserved. He hasn't gotten back to us. So for us to go and promote him when um, you know he hasn't shown any love towards us is a little bit hard. I think he has a great channel. I have nothing bad to say about him. It's just been a little bit of radio silence, which is kind of weird because I think we're all trying to help each other out. So, Ian said, honestly, I think it would be hilarious if you guys played against Mark Crossfield and Coach Lockie. That would be YouTube gold. <laughs> yes, it would. And I feel like we would take those guys down. So the challenge is out there if they want to play. Um, I, I guess they were in San Diego recently. But, um, you know, we're in San Diego and they didn't reach out to us. So, you know, they might be scared to, to play against us. So it's, it's okay. Oh, God. <laughs> it's okay. Favorite apparel brand? Is that um, a serious question? Under Armour and I like Adidas and I like Travis Matthews. So, but Travis Matthews kind of blew us off too. So I was a little bummed out about that. I think they're a local company and, um, you know, maybe we're just not big enough yet. <laughs> Charles, you said I can't make a donation through iOS yet. A little sad face. Hey, it's all about the effort, and uh, at least you try. <clears throat> you want to do two more, or yeah, we can we do got? a few. We got some time. On a time crunch. For Marco, do you go to any of the cars and coffee in the M5? I I've been to one or two up in Orange County. Um, when I first got the M5, I was on the forums, the M5 forums, and I actually made a bunch of friends on there just, you know, through cars. And a handful of those guys lived in Orange County, so I drove up there and yeah, did that for a little while. Um, but yeah, I don't really go to them anymore. So. Uh, have you all ever tried Oakley Golf Apparel? It's phenomenal. No, I haven't, but, you know, if mm. Oakley wants to, you know, throw some gear, <laughs> let's do it. You know, so we're still looking for a sponsor. <laughs> uh. We need a term for being aggressive on a shot and going for a part five and two. That's um, a good idea. Throw some ideas down. Andrew below. said John Daly it. John Daly? <laughs> That's not bad. First thing that comes to my mind is I uh, get drunk. I don't want to think of John Daly in it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Poor John Daly. <laughs> that guy's got so much talent in the world and he definitely... Dude, uh, but he just won on the senior tour. I know, I but know. I mean, that guy could have been phenomenal, yeah. you know. Uh, Will said, say my name so my mom... <laughs> Actually, <laughs> what's no, up, Will? you guys are real people. Yeah, what's up, Will? <laughs> uh, Does Chipper Mike drink a lot of coffee? So Mike used to not drink coffee at all. And then, I don't know how long ago it was, maybe a year ago, I, I was getting my normal drink, which is a grande iced Americano with two pumps of white mocha from Starbucks. And this guy tried it and he was like, oh man, that's pretty good. 
And then like the next day he got one and oh my God, he was jacked up and he was just on another level. <laughs> Ever since then he's been drinking coffee. I don't know how often you drink, but he was, some days he'll call me and be like, dude, I had a Starbucks this morning, got so much work done and I can just share him. Like, <laughs> oh my God, I was, so, I was so productive, you know? I was like, oh, that's great. I don't, you know, I don't do it every day now, but, um, but yeah, he got me hooked, so thanks. <laughs> Um, Subscriber goal for the end of 2017. I'll let you take it away. Um, I don't know, 25,000? Yeah, I think that's a good goal. I think that's reasonable. Uh, like, wow, Mike is careering right now. He has had three <laughs> under par rounds in a row. That's a career. Um, well, it's not a career, but recently <laughs> it's been pretty good because my game's been a little off, but I, I used to be a decent golfer at, at one point. Oh, uh, these are some good ideas. Ten cup it for like going for a par five and two. Oh, tiger, tiger stripe. stripe. Okay. I'm gonna tiger stripe it. That's. A, I don't know that's... if I can say that. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I like the tin cup, but step on it. Yeah, it's pretty good. I like step on it. Look at Charles balls it. <laughs> balls it. Go for it. <laughs> Those are pretty good ideas. Uh... When you um... shoot an amazing round, you have to say career. Yeah, I know. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been the best on the channel so far. So this will be my third round under par on the channel. So caffeine is hell of a drug. Yeah, it sure is, Nick. It is. He just Ooh. had his this morning, so he uh, he was pretty chippy this morning too. And he usually is. He just hides it on camera a little bit better than I do. I just you know I just yeah. come out of the gates chippy. I still kind of hold back on camera for whatever reason. But yeah, he's always yeah, he's, I, you know I, I get a little timid. I don't know why, but I, no. I typically. Eh. You're not sometimes. I feel like you're the. <laughs> he's like the Jim Nance of YouTube. Wouldn't you guys agree? <laughs> yeah, right, dude. <laughs> I'm announcing it right now. Jim what would Arnie do? What would Arnie do? I like That's that. That's a good one. I like that. That should be on a shirt. Show some love. Whoa, Mike. Mike, what's up? <laughs> dropping, <laughs> dropping some bills. He just Thank dropped you. ten bucks for us. Oh, that's gonna pay for that. Rock, paper, scissors challenge no, we, we got, just had. That goes towards the channel. No, you, that know, doesn't pay kidding. off your debt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Mike just made a $10 donation. Uh, definitely appreciate it. We're going to reinvest all the money that we're earning from this channel, just like we have been from day one. Uh, back into products, back into playing golf, um, and just growing this thing. So really appreciate it that you guys are willing to do that. Yeah, and we haven't taken $1 from the channel, no. so um, we're reinvesting it, and uh, we're just like good small business owners, and we're just trying to grow the channel and give it back to you guys, and um, you know, let's see it take off. You know, more balls, more giveaways. Yeah, we, we got more balls, uh, so they will be coming. Maybe we'll do a giveaway for part two. Um, do you want to do Snell or do you want to do the, the TPs? Let's, or do you, let's do ball markers. Why don't you guys tell us what we're going to do a giveaway in part two of the collaboration that we did with the girls. Let us know what you want us to give away. Do you guys want the Snell golf balls, Taylor made golf balls? We got ball markers, we got hats, um, we got stickers. Drop it down below. Don't say everything, but just like pick a few things. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> uh, Jonathan said, when you guys come across as friends and having a laugh, ribbing each other, it's good chemistry. No need to make the vlog so golf only. Go with the flow, guys. It's entertaining. Yeah, we're um, learning that. Yeah. I think we got so focused on like the shots and making it quick and, yeah. you know. And we're new to this. So this is, you know, we're still not even seven months in. You know, we haven't even hit 100 videos yet. So, you know, we're growing and we're learning and uh, it's, it's all new to us. Shot tracer question mark? Yeah, the shot tracer, uh, the shot tracer got the cut. It's been, it was adding a ton of work for me. So I honestly, it just in an effort to try to get out more videos and keep keep going, um, I took it, I took it out or I stopped doing it. I should say, it was honestly adding like an extra ten minutes uh, per shot because of I had to export the file. Just a lot of work. So. Uh, we're going to see how things work out with Matt, who's doing the video editing, and if he wants to take that on, I'm going to try to encourage him to take that on and get the shot tracer back, because I, I personally love it. So Yeah, and we can we'll play see. more golf, pump out a little bit more vids, and yeah. um, you know give you guys what you want, and <laughs> you know it'll allow us to play a little bit more golf, exactly. and give this guy a break, because he's been grinding like a savage for the last... You know, almost seven months. So yeah, and that, that's cool. Like I don't, I don't mind grinding it out. I think we just want to keep growing it and doing as much as we can. So. Finding people to help has been awesome. Steve said, uh, I got one suggestion for you. Keep doing what you're doing as it works well, <laughs> if not better than all the others. Thanks, Steve. Uh, going out to Rams Hill, yes, we are going to do Rams Hill. Um, 
we just got to figure out a day. It's a little bit of a hike for us. I think it's about an hour and a half away, but uh, we'll make that happen. Um, Relic said, uh, I have a love-hate relationship with your channel. I love watching all the beautiful golf <laughs> courses, but then I hate you guys for being able to play them all. <laughs> Jealous. Thanks, man. Yeah, we, we got it pretty good out here, and uh, we're very, very fortunate and uh, very blessed to, to be in Southern California and be able to do this. But um, if anything, we'll bring you guys along for the ride and, uh, you know, try to enjoy it together. Yeah, we're super grateful. We wake up, you know, every day thinking, uh, you know, uh, to be alive and to have this great weather, the great golf courses, um, you know, and just being able to, you know, spend time together and play golf and, and you know, do this journey. Uh, what is this? Uh, yeah. When you're about to hit a shot, do you realize that you basically have like 10,000 people watching you hit that shot? It, uh, on the first few videos, it very much felt like that, even though we ha we only have like, you know, 10 people watching us. Um, now, I don't really, I personally don't really even think about it that much anymore. I'm just like, you know, if I hit a bad shot, you guys can understand. You guys have been super nice about like understanding bad scores and bad shots and not getting honest too much about that because we're not professionals. We're just guys that like to play. So I don't really worry about it too much anymore. If anything, I focus a little bit more and try to hit some cool shots, especially with like the up and downs I try to focus on because, you know, I just want to want to show you guys that we can also hit good shots. So yeah, I think it helps with the golf game, honestly. Need a golf Pollux emoji. That would be sick. That's a great idea, Charles. How do we make one of those? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, hit me up on Twitter. You know what to do. <laughs> uh, Crossfield has gotten so uh, I'm not gonna call in. I think you're right. Um, but yeah. Uh, we should use more irons off the tee. I think I definitely should. I, I agree with that on... Um, I think that should be my strategy when I'm not in the driver good on some of the holes because I've definitely noticed that the driver, at least in the last couple of rounds I played, has severely got me in trouble and then I was just um, on the defense the, the rest of the hole. So that's a good, that's actually good advice, S, S, S. Uh, you guys have so much good attitudes on the course and that has helped me when I play golf. You guys are awesome. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah. You know, attitudes, uh, you know, I, I try to correlate that to the kids uh, that I coach and yeah. um, it seems like, you know, I am fortunate enough to have great kids in, in this community, so I don't have to, you know, coach them up too much on that. And I, I don't think I've ever seen a kid slam a club, throw a club, or, um, you know, just have really bad body language, but, um, you know, we appreciate the feedback on that. And, um, you know, Marco's another great uh, example of uh, having a great attitude, even when you're playing bad. And, uh, you know, obviously he was struggling out at Vista Valley Country Club and, you know, we still had a great time. We were yeah. making fun of each other. It, it almost got to be to the point where we were laughing at every bad shot and, yeah. you know, it might have been too much, but <laughs> we were having a good time and we were just making fun of each other, really. And, and that's all you can really do because everyone's been there. I mean, at the end of the day, there's other things that we could be doing that are much worse than playing golf. Mm -hmm. So, like, you guys have heard the quote, you know, a bad day on the golf course is a better day in the office any day of the week. And that's... That's true, and you got to remind yourself of that. It's not just like a fun quote that someone put on a poster one day. That's that's a fact. <laughs> so take that to heart and just go out there and have fun with it. If you have a bad hole, whatever, move on. Bad round. Hopefully, you get to play again another day and make up for it. So yeah, and you know we work so much that we really appreciate being out there and uh, you know playing golf and you know hanging out together and. He kind of brings out my chippy side and I think I bring his <laughs> out too. So, you know, it makes for, uh, you know, good chemistry. Yeah. Surprised uh, we don't make long drive bets while playing. Yeah, there's just no reason to. I mean, first of all, yeah, this guy drives me most of the time, but even if he didn't, I don't, it's still not a good idea only because you start swinging harder. You get out of your rhythm. You start trying to do something that you aren't really, you know, used to doing a lot and then you make mistakes and then you put yourself out of position and, uh, then the rest of the holes kind of can be botched. So the gain in that could be five bucks, but it could be a loss in, you know, some money around the green, bad score. Uh, you guys are the best, and you guys should do uh, Volano Country Club in Chino Hills. Hmm. Yeah, that I've sounds like a good one. one. Uh -huh. um, we'll take a look at that. Well, it's not too far away. I think it's only about 90 minutes, so we can definitely do that. Yeah, what's your idea? What's your take on Rory uh, firing his caddy? I mean, his caddy just gave him some, like, he's trained him out. Right. 
just recently and uh, I, got him to focus up and then I think, getting rid of him. I think Rory is such a huge talent that um, he was a little bit complacent with his game that, um, you know, I don't think he worked as hard and he kind of, after he won a couple majors, he just, you know, got, got a lot of money and got, you know, kind of comfortable and his game wasn't as good as putting kind of left him. Yeah. And I think, you know, he needed somebody to blame and his caddy has been with him for nine years. So obviously he's a really good caddy and obviously it's not the caddy's fault. Yeah. He's the one that's making the plays, hitting the shots and, and doing all that. And I think his caddy was right. You know, he needed to fire a, you know, a little something under his butt to get him going and uh, I think he you know played really well after you know his caddy told him what time it was but he just fired his caddy right but yeah. for the tournament when he was kind of you know yeah. about to miss the cut he was like hey get your head out of your butt and let's let's get going yeah. and that put a little fire under him and sure did he made the cut and did pretty well and was in contention yeah. you know so I I think that's exactly what he needed you know and, and honesty is not something someone always wants to hear I feel so um, it might, might have offended him a little bit being in the news and got a little yeah. uh, publicity on it. So um, for me, I think he's a great caddy, and uh, maybe Bones is going to be uh, you know Rory's new caddy. Who knows? <laughs> nah, Bones is commentating. He's doing a great job out there is too. He? Yeah, that's cool. I think he yeah he just started recently. So All right. yeah, we'll see. Affordable driver recommendations. Oh, um, I, I would get a used driver. Like there's really. Unless you're getting fitted for a driver, I would not be buying if you're you know money's tight Don't go out and buy a brand new driver go on eBay get one. That's a year or two old They're still solid like the old m2s old m2s like your last year's model You can get them for, on eBay for I think 150 or 200 bucks You know with any kind of shaft you want any kind of grip you want even on eBay uh, barely hit so I would just go on there and then if you if that driver doesn't work out well for you you could throw it right back on eBay and probably make almost all your money back if it's within, you know, a two, three, four month period. Um, so yeah, I would buy used clubs and in terms of what type of clubs, we can't recommend that. Check out Peter or uh, Rick Shields. He's, he does all the club reviews. So, uh, Jake asked, uh, do you teach golf etiquette to your players, Mike? Yeah, I do. Um, that and pace of play is super important for us. Um, we always finish in under two hours. If not, we do a down and back uh, for the boys or the girls. Um, you know, we'll do all kinds of calisthenics to make sure that we're doing things right. Um, I had a girl on my team that wouldn't yell four when she hit a golf ball at somebody and almost hit one of our players. So we had her do push-ups, plank position, and, and a down and back. And guess what? She never did it again. Um, and, you know, we have a lot of newbies on our team, so we have to kind of teach that, walking in other people's line. You know, just being respectful on the golf course, fixing ball marks, uh, divots, and so forth. So, absolutely. Mr. Q, lefties unite. Mm. <laughs> so glad I, got, I still got support of the lefty community. <laughs> oh, you got plenty of fans. Yeah, I'm just messing. Uh, I love the Piss Excellence comment the other day. Yeah, Marco, I'm, I'm surprised he left that one in there because usually he films me on the outtakes with those kind of comments. And I say a lot of stuff like that. I just ended up cutting a lot of it. So I'm going to just start putting it in there for you guys because I think, you know what, if you can't take a joke, then uh, our channel's probably not the right one, but I think all you guys can. So yeah, it's going to make the videos even better. <laughs> uh, Steven said, uh, your personalities make golf hogs the, the best vlog, period, and it ain't even close. Thanks, Steven. Appreciate it, man. You've been a, a longtime supporter. Always see your name, always see your comments. So uh, been buying all the that. merchandise too. So thanks yeah. for that, Stephen. Yeah, Hopefully thanks. it's working out good. And yeah. Uh, what is the hardest course you have ever played? Um, Cog Hill for me. Cog Hill for me too. <laughs> God. Uh, that course was tough. Oh, man, it was long, nasty, and you know we'll we'll be back uh, this summer, and we're gonna get our redemption. And uh, I feel like we'll both break eighty out there. Uh, make your oh. way. Good. We should get a hold of uh, Jamie Sablowski and play with him. The long drive guy. Yeah, maybe I hit one past him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. I'm just Let's kidding. not get ahead I'm of just ourselves. Kidding. God, <laughs> you guys are so sensitive. He's trying to make it on tour, though. Yeah, I think he should. You know, yeah. he's got a really good swing. He yeah. just, you know, he's got to dial down his swing a bunch. Um, you know, he's got to drop it down to probably like 115 miles per hour, and um, you know, or less even. <laughs> Oh, so JP was giving bad yardage uh, to, to Rory for a long time and didn't really leave putts either. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Someone's giving you wrong yardage. That's the basics of, you know, the caddy's job. So that's, uh, if it happened over and over, then I could understand that a little bit more. And he doesn't read putts either, so. Yeah. <laughs> Bonus to caddy for <laughs> Question mark. 
All right. Two more? Sure. Let's do two more, and then we're going to go out and play, film another video. Um, How long does a round take you guys, um, considering the added time for film every shot? If it's just Mike and I, it'll take us about three hours and 15 minutes to three and a half hours, I would say. Maybe a little bit longer, depending on... Um, with without cameras? Uh, with cameras. With cameras, yeah, 315, just you yeah. 315, 330. We can fly it when it's just us. And then if we're playing as a foursome, that's when it takes like the full four hours and 15 minutes. We've gotten really good at um, doing the foursome filming a little bit easier with the two cameras. You guys already noticed that, I'm sure, with the girls. We just gave them a camera, coached them up on it. We film our shots, they film their shots. You know, they didn't get every one of theirs, but they got most of them. They did a fantastic job, so that's that's going to be kind of the approach with whoever else we play with. Um, that keeps up the pace. Mm. In our opinion, how come there isn't uh, that many golf vloggers on YouTube? Um, I think it's a tough market to break, not to break into, but it's just a tough market in general. People go to the most popular channels and they see, wow, these guys have been doing it for six years and they have 200,000 or 300,000 subscribers. And, you know, those numbers are really not that impressive for YouTube. I mean, you can go to, you know, uh, Peter McKinnon's channel for uh, photography and film. He's been doing it for six months and he's up to a mil almost a million subscribers now. So the, the chance, the opportunity for growth on YouTube for the golf niche isn't that big. And I think people see that and it's kind of, you know, it kind of turns you off a little bit just because you're like, wow, I'm not going to be able to make uh, a crazy living doing this. It's not going to really be life changing. You really have to do it for the passion. So I think the guys that are doing it right now on YouTube for golf, they're strictly doing it for passion. It's hard to say that they do it for money because I don't believe that any of those guys really make any kind of big bucks off of their channels. Maybe they have some sponsorship deals, but it's not, it's not life changing money. It's a nice lifestyle, but it's not like, you know, they're going to go out and buy Ferraris and live some kind of extravagant lifestyle. Whereas, you know, some of the other guys that are doing YouTube that are in the millions and have gotten there, like, look at Nate shot. I mean, that guy's falling out of control up in LA and, uh, you know, he's this young kid with 3 million subscribers that is a gamer and that's just, there's a bigger viewership for that. So yeah, that's my take on it. Uh, dang, Rick Shields just went live. <laughs> Don't you guys coordinate air times? <laughs> no. Well, we're going to do Rick a favor because we're jumping off right now. Yeah. We're going to go play some golf. And uh, appreciate you guys all tuning in. Go hit up Rick. Uh, remind him to come uh, and check out our channel and give us a little bit of love and his. Tell yeah. him you guys want to see the Ryder Cup. So Yeah, where you at, Rick? Stay on top of that. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's sit <laughs> down uh, Pete and this guy. <laughs> All right. all right, guys, we're going to get going right now, but uh, appreciate you guys all tuning in, and uh, yeah, we'll see you for the next one in a couple yeah. of weeks. Make sure you guys follow us on Twitter and uh, Instagram, and uh, we're going to be doing some more giveaways uh, for part two and part three of uh, the girls' vid, so uh, stay tuned for that, and uh, check us out on Instagram. All right, guys, later.